everyone, welcome back to Run Real. I'm JP, and today we're going to be looking at how to set up a Euro nymphing rod. Now, um, I have my own way of doing things, so if you've seen other videos out there that maybe works a little bit better for you, go with it. Um, if this helps you while you're watching, make sure you like, and if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So first we're going to start off with the rod. Um, I recommend at least a 9 or 10 foot rod, uh, preferably 10 foot. You could go a little bit bigger. I've seen people do 11 and 12 foot Euro nymphing rods. They just then become more specialized Euro nymphing rods. You can't really use them for other things. So I don't really like to go with the 11 or 12 foot rod personally, just because um, when you start to do things like that, then you are strictly carrying around a Euro nymphing rod. Now, when I'm out on the water, I might switch from Euro nymphing to dry dropper rig to to dry fly uh, maybe I want to pull some streamers or something like that so I like to have setups that allow me to do that with carrying the least amount of equipment as possible this rod right here is a Gray's 10 foot three weight rod now you can do this with virtually any three weight rod that is out there I just happen to pick this one up at a, a heck of a deal so this is the one I'm gonna be setting up today so when it comes to your nymphing rod, the reason that I suggest a three weight, and most people will suggest a three weight, is because it's got really nice flexibility. Um, what you're looking for whenever you're doing this is you're gonna be drifting a fly in a way to where when the fish uh, comes up to eat that fly, you don't want it to get spooked by the stiffness of the rod, you know, or you jerking around and doing things like that. So I prefer a rod that's got a lot of flex in the end, right? I mean, this thing, is just super bendy so enough of that what we're really looking for whenever we're looking for a euro nymphing rod too is we are looking for balance so you can see the way that you're going to be fishing a euro nymphing rod is you're pretty much going to be extended out all day long just drifting by that gets really tough if the front of your rod is unbalanced from the back of your rod and you can see that every rod is going to have a balance point this one just happens to be right about there I want it to balance back here though where I'm going to be holding it because otherwise it's going to be giving me a hard time on the water and by the time you get finished at the end of the day you're just going to be tired. So let me show you how to set up that reel. Now typically whenever you're setting up a fly rod you will have a three weight fly rod with a three weight uh, reel. And the reason you're doing that is because that's typically the, the best way to properly load the rod whenever you're uh, trying to do a big cast or something. But whenever you're fishing a three weight Whenever you're fishing a three-way Euro nymph, you're not gonna be casting. You don't care about loading your rod properly. What you care about is that balance. And so for that reason, usually I like to go up about two sizes. So this is a three-weight, so I like to go up to about a five-weight reel. The reason I do that is whenever you take a five-weight reel and put it onto this rod, I can really start to change those balance points. So you saw earlier, let me get out of the trees over there. You saw earlier where I was balanced way up here now I'm going to be balanced right there where I'm going to be gripping that rod. And so it gives it a whole new feel, gives it a whole new balance, and it really takes a lot of that weight out. Instead of holding everything up here with your wrist or, you know, leveraging it with your shoulder, what you're doing now is it's a part of this arm. It's just an extension of your arm, makes everything easier, makes those hook sets easier because you don't have to lift the tip up so much. Um, it really becomes more of an action instead of, you know, a reaction. And believe it or not, you will hook a lot more fish doing it that way. Now, I know I've got the plastic on still. I'm gonna take it off, give me a break, right? You don't want me to leave this on and fish with it the whole time? So whenever it comes to that balance, if you're in a store and you're buying a reel setup, you're buying a rod setup, uh, you know, you can actually set that up in store and see what's gonna balance the best. Remember, balance it with line already on it because that's gonna make a bit of a difference. But that rule of thumb, two weights up, typically does a really good job. All right, so I already have a reel here spooled up and everything. If you're really wanting to know how to spool up your reel when you first get it, go ahead, check out this link up above and that will show you how it's done. Now that you have it spooled up, uh, you can do your leader in a variety of ways. Now you could just, uh, you know, do the easy way and I don't blame you if you do. They make these Euro nymphing leaders here. This one was $13 from the vending machine at the uh, Kern River Fly Shop. Um, you can probably find them online cheaper, I don't know, or you can make your own. What's really nice about this one is it's a tapered leader. Now, tapered leaders, they don't tend to uh, cut the water as good as uh, some other types of leaders, but uh, for a basic setup, if you just wanna go with this, this is the way to go. Um, again, check out that link, and that will show you how to put a leader on your, on your reel as well. 
All right, so the first thing you wanna do whenever you're setting up your Euro nymphing leader is you want to go ahead and you want to somehow attach some leader material. Um, I prefer like a 30 pound mono, or if you don't have the 30 pound mono, it's just the butt section of an old leader that you have. So here was a leader that I had attached. It's broken off I don't, you know, numerous times. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here where it's attached to the fly line, and I'm gonna come out and I'm just gonna measure that. That's probably like 12 to 16 inches right there. And so what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and give that a little snip. And now that I have that cut, I'm going to attach it to about another foot section of cider material. You can use other types of indicator material, but like I said, fish are looking for that resistance when you're fishing this Euro nymphing rig. You want them to take the fly without knowing that it's attached to anything. And so the way that I do that is I really like to use, this is a, a 20 pound amnesia line. And so what I'm doing is I'm coming down from that 30 pound to 20 pound and I'm going to attach this and this is going to be used as my cider. Now I'm going to be watching for this to dip down into the water or pull straight or different things like that to know that I need to set that hook and there's a fish on it. So the way that I do that is I just come in here with this material right and I'm going to attach that to this butt section here uh, using a triple surgeon's knot. Now you can just go straight with the cider material to your uh, fly line and you can either use a blood knot to attach that if you don't have that welded loop or you can use a perfection loop. If you don't know what any of these uh, knots are, look up some YouTube videos. There are really good YouTube videos out there that can probably do a way better job of explaining that than I can. So now I'm gonna take this, like I said, triple surgeon knot and I'm just gonna loop that around, okay? It's called a triple surgeon knot because I'm guessing surgeons use this but it's looped through uh, three times, right? So it's just a basic overhand knot and I just loop that through three times. Got the planes flying over today. Right, so I just loop that through three times like that. Wet it and pull tight. And I can go ahead and clip these tag ends off. Hang on to your excess material, don't let those go down the river. Now I have my cider material here. Now this cider material, it can be straight. Uh, they even make a little curly cue like this. You can curl it up uh, using heat and different things like that. Uh, that's called a, a French coil or a French nymphing style. Uh, this one here is more of a Czech nymphing style. But now we're going to attach the rest of our uh, tippet material to this to continue building out this leader. So my preferred leader length is about a foot or two feet longer than the rod that you're fishing with. So this one's a 10 foot rod, so I'm gonna be building out about a 12 foot leader. The way that I do that is just simple crude measurements, uh, right? I got a foot, uh, about another foot, right? So that's two feet. So now I want to taper down my, my leader in a way that is going to give it the least drag in the water. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm just gonna build that out with the X's, right? You've got your tippet material, um, I want to end up with a 4X, so I'm going to start with a 0X that is going to attach to this amnesia line here using that same triple surgeon's knot. It's going to attach to this cider material. It'll attach here with that 0X, and then I will attach it to a 2X, and then I will attach it to the 4X. Now, you can taper that a little bit more if you wanted. You can do two foot sections. Um, I don't really recommend that because those knots tend to get caught up on things, so I like as, as few as possible. Again, these are going to change for your conditions. You might want to end up with a 6X on a Euro nymphing rig. You might want to end up with a 2X, right? You may be pulling some monsters out or something. Uh, maybe you want that abrasiveness. All right, really quick. My measurement system for this is pretty simple, right? I grab it, I stretch it out. That's about three feet. I got about a six foot width arm span, so I figured that's about three feet. Uh, save some excess because you're gonna lose some to your knot and your cutting and all that other stuff. Um, but that's about the, that's the easiest way to do it. So I got that zero, now I'm gonna go with the two. All right, I got that two on, now I'm gonna go with the four. And that's it, I got that four X on there, so it goes four, two, zero, that attaches to my cider, that attaches to my butt section that I have attached to my fly line. Um, this is what your guides are doing. If, if you've hired a guide, and uh, you show up and they've got you all set up for your nymphing. This is what they do when they get home after guiding and this is what they do the night before they take you on that guided fishing trip. So tip them well. 
right? They need those tips because uh, it's a lot of work. And there you have it. I will be putting some videos together on how to fish uh, your own nymphing style fly fishing. Uh, so just look for those in the future. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you got that notification bell turned on. Uh, if this was helpful to you, uh, you liked it, make sure you hit the like button. Again, thanks for watching, everyone. I will catch you on the next video.